All right, welcome to another Friday night episode of Keto Rocks Radio. I'm Jim Hobbs, and to the left, right, is lead guitarist of the band Kicks and Rhino Bucket, Brian Damish Forsyth. So, Brian, how was your uh, how was your last show down at Fort Myers with Vixen? How did that uh, show go? Oh, that went really well. I mean, the the it was this huge club. We'd never played there before. It was really nice. I think it used to be like a country bar. And, uh, you know, everybody was talking about, they, they used to have a, a one of those bull, mechanical mechanical bulls. bulls. <laughs> yeah, and all that stuff. So it was like this huge place. Uh, perfect, perfect for a band like us. But in a huge stage, too. A lot of room. Now, you guys. Always, it's always that, nice. Was it was the temperature better than it was in, uh, in, in, in Dallas? Yes. <laughs> I mean, outside, well, no, actually, the whole time we were in Fort Myers, it was kind of gloomy and, and kind of drizzly. You brought the little... kicks cloud with you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I think that storm in the Gulf was starting to make its way over. So it wasn't unbearably hot or anything. But uh, great show. What was the, it was a sold out show, it looked like, from the. Uh... I don't think it was sold out, but it was, it was a really good crowd because it was a Thursday night. The guy wants to have us back on a weekend. Good, good, so. good. Now, where do you, now where are you guys playing this week? Uh, North Dakota, um, Dickinson, North Dakota. We're doing some kind of. It, we did it before. It's um like this street fair kind of thing. Um, they set up a stage and block off like a couple streets, and you know all the people crowd in there. So that's cool. And then uh, that's on that's tomorrow night. Um, well, this this is being recorded. aired on Friday, so you're playing Thursday night again. So that was last night, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and then uh, Saturday we're in. Uh, uh, oh, we're right outside of Denver. Uh, you know, might as well made it. Might as well call it Denver, but uh, we're doing a, a festival, an outdoor festival down there. Is that on Saturday or Friday? What did I... Saturday? Saturday. Okay. Yeah. So you guys are staying out west for a little bit. How, now you got a direct flight from. Uh, from Nashville to, or do you got to go to a little puddle jumper into uh, wherever the place you're playing in South Dakota, uh, North Dakota? Yeah, this is going to be a nightmare travel week because <laughs> Southwest doesn't go there. So we had to, somehow we ended up on United and, and I have to go to Denver first and then jump on like a little, one of those small planes to get up there. And I know, you know, it's always a nightmare carrying guitars in those situations. Cause they never want you to go on the small plane with the guitars and it's like, but they'll fit like they, you know, they, they just can't see that they think it's not going to fit. And I know it's going to fit cause I've been on those planes before. Right. So it's always a struggle and oh, I hate it. Wow. So, so then, so you don't have to parachute in, do you? <laughs> <laughs> no. All right. Well, that's, that's, that's good. Well, we got a special guest. I'll bring him on. He's a he's a really great friend of mine. Um, we go way back, and um, he created a channel a while back called uh, I mean probably really way back called Captain Keto, and has been promoting the keto lifestyle for a long time. He recently talked to me about uh, leaky gut, which you know, which is a topic that's been in my household for a long time, especially with Peggy and, and what she's had to deal with, and so. I invited him to come on and him to share his findings. Um, Steve's, Steve's a musician um, himself. He's more like the uh, Jimmy Buffett of the hunting world. He writes music uh, for the uh, for the hunting world, wrote the music for Doug Dynasty for their early, early careers. And so let me bring on Mr. Steve, Captain Keto Conover. And Steve, if you can unmute yourself and bring on your video. We'd love to have you join us. Ah, and there he is. There I am. There he is. Well, welcome to the program, brother. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Hi, Brian. Nice to finally meet you. Yeah. So why don't you tell everybody a little bit what got you down this road of leaky gut and uh, what your findings have found and uh, how important this is to all of us that are doing the keto carnivore lifestyle. Yeah, it's it's a it's a neat uh, discovery, uh, really. Um, I have to tell you that. It, so I started doing keto about five years ago, 
because my doctors wanted to put me on. I was borderline type 2 diabetic, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, <laughs> all the stuff. And my doctor wrote me like a laundry list of prescriptions that he wanted me to get on. And I said, no, nah, I've been researching this thing called keto and I'm going to try it. And he was against it. But after, after 90 days, when I went back and did my blood work, because he was all concerned, my uh, triglycerides dropped 99 points and my blood work was perfect. My blood pressure was normalized and my blood sugar was nowhere near type two diabetic in just 90 days. So he said, I guess keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> And I did, that was five years ago. Um, and I started doing the Captain Keto thing and I started evangelizing kind of like uh, y'all are doing about this whole insulin sensitivity uh, fiasco that the, what, the uh, Western diet and the food pyramid had got us into. And, but I started to notice that not, everybody reacted the way I did. Like I didn't have a lot of like serious gut issues and, but people that I were, that were following me that were starting keto were getting keto flu, but it didn't make any sense to me. Why do some people get keto flu and some people don't get keto flu? Uh, a, a lot of females were really, really struggling with, you know, gastrointestinal issues, diarrhea, constipation, no energy, you know, versions of the keto flu, but different than the guys. Uh, rashes, all kinds of responses to eating food. And it didn't make any sense to me. So lately when somebody brought up the subject to me about leaky gut, I'm, I've seen Dr. Gundry and other people talk about leaky gut and lectins and and all these food sensitivities issues, I started to do a deep dive. Brian, I'm one of those. I'll go on WebMD and I'll go down a rabbit hole of all the studies. And yeah. but but lately there's some really, really good work being done on the connection between your gut and your brain. Mm -hmm. And it turns out that your central nervous system and your enteric nervous system, um, talk to each other so you dig around a little bit more and, and and you start to discover that you know they think people now think 95 percent of americans westerners have a leaky gut and that comes from a, a variety of things it, it comes from environmental toxins it comes from food toxins it comes from water toxins and antibiotics and all these things over our lives and, and, and that this very thin cellular wall of our GI tract gets holes in it. And then the stuff that we're ingesting uh, starts to not be taken in or gotten rid of as, as a toxin. I mean, our body, our immune system is amazing, but when there's holes in it, it gets into our bodies in a way that it's not meant to be. And we have all these inflammatory issues. So, so what does that have to do with keto and carnivore? Well, it explains a lot of things. It, it explains why a lot of people, when they go, especially when they go carnivore, when you go full carnivore and you're not doing, you know, some people have gallbladder issues and liver issues and ingesting fat, you know, becomes a process that's hard for a lot of people to get through. But for a lot of people that, that go carnivore, see an instant relief in a lot of these in, inflammatory issues because you're no longer ingesting carbohydrates and specifically uh, simple carbohydrates and processed carbohydrates. And, and this was the discovery that rocked my world, that people were testing positive when they got pulled over by the cops, they were blowing positive for alcohol. From, in, from having a leaky gut and ingesting too much sugar, which means that the bad bacteria in their gut were processing the sugar and turning it into alcohol. Wow. wow. And that, through your leaky gut, causes all these IBS, Crohn's, all this stuff is that process. Well, when you go straight carnivore, that's immediately eliminated. 
you immediately cut out all all of the the stuff that your stomach was converting into alcohol and destroying your gallbladder, your kidneys, and your liver with, you know, 30% of American males have a fatty liver that don't drink alcohol. Yeah, my son-in-law is one of them. Yeah, and they end up losing their gallbladders. And it's because they have leaky gut and they're fermenting sugar in their stomach. They're literally a still, like back in the woods. I live four miles from West Virginia and there's stills in the woods out, out here. Um, and that's what people's stomachs have been turned into. So going carnivore eliminates that process immediately. So that, that was a neat discovery to make. Yeah, take, take a breath for a second, Steve. I, I want to, the, the fact is, Brian, have you ever heard a doctor bring any of this up to you when you go see a doctor? This is the mind blowing part. Like I've never heard this before. Like a doctor explain, well, this is probably what's going on with you. Oh no, no, they never get that far. <laughs> Not even close. <laughs> so when he was explaining this to me, this was explaining a lot of issues that people have. The people who I know who have issues going keto or carnivore, it really did explain, you know, the reasons why they they are. But that doesn't mean they should throw out going keto or carnivore. They should find out why it's not working for them. And I think this may be the missing link of why it's not working for them. Go ahead, Steve. It I'm is. sorry. Yeah, no, it's great. And it's and it and please help help focus me. Um, it is the main point that all for a lot of people that start get thrown off track because of this and and the simple remedy brian and, and jen the simple remedy is fiber not sugar not high sugar is fiber there's lots of great sources of water soluble fiber that don't have sugar just this the simple remedy is either before you start or in the beginning of going keto or carnivore just do a really good regimen of water soluble fiber and uh i actually take a supplement that act that that has um oh man my brain stopped working uh that that has peptides that are that are the the uh building blocks of of protein and dna along with my fiber but but you know the point is is that that if you just give your stomach a little fiber the good bacteria see the problem in this whole thing is it's the bad bacteria the inmates are running the asylum and your stomach is the problem so what we need to do is give the the guards the security guards in your stomach need some food and it's fiber so if we just give our stomachs fiber not sugar but fiber why and and, and ease into keto or carnivore for the first 30 to 90 days these people i think will have a lot more success and that's what i'm finding people that have that have gone back and done really a 30-day uh kind of a just low carb diet with a lot of fiber and then gone carnivore <clears throat> are really having a lot more success than they were in the past and they skipped over all those flu symptoms that were caused by their leaky gut because they've done a lot to repair that damage before trying to radically change their diet well let's let's sense. let's talk about so you talked about good bacteria and bad bacteria and, right. and i think people for most people i didn't either until i went down this rabbit trail the fact that when you take statin drugs that they Ooh. most they prescribe you they mm -hmm. are eating the good bacteria that you have in your intestinal tract your stomach and that's when issues start to uh, materialize or to uh come to the surface you start to uh to to see issues that are happening which then they turn around and diagnose as uh chrome's disease or uh, a, a numerous digestive uh, issues that you may be experiencing but the reality of it is they literally are causing that for you which is the reason why then you get here hit with take probiotics um and so does probiotics help steve i mean if you're taking probiotics oh, no. no so so here's here's another thing that i've that i've discovered lately so if you, if you have leaky gut you can take probiotics other supplements anything that you want to take 
is simply rearranging deck chairs on the Titanic. The first thing that has to be done is to fix your leaky gut. And that can only be done by removing the toxins, removing the simple sugars and adding fiber. Now, if That's someone's experiencing, only, only if someone's, so what's some of the other symptoms that people may experience so they know that they may be dealing with like a leaky gut type of situation? I mean, what are some <laughs> of the, of the outward appearances outside of having to, you know, get your, you know, your glob, your gallbladder, your liver yeah. MRI? Well, everybody knows the obvious ones. That's why most of the country doesn't know they have it. So if you wake up in the morning after sleeping eight hours and you still feel like crap, you have leaky gut, period. Period. <laughs> um, if, and it doesn't matter your age, if you're, if you're noticing that you just can't remember stuff anymore, that, that you know, cognitive decline uh, is, is a huge red flag. Um, but, you know, especially, the addiction to energy drinks is a huge red flag. You know, all, the, all these, so just, you know, before I get off here, because I got to go here pretty quick um, to get my boys at baseball camp. But one of the things that, that, that helps to think about all this is that, so planet Earth has a microbiome in the dirt, in the air, and in the water. There's bacteria, fungi, and viruses that make up the microbiome on earth and it's no different in the human body the human body has we breathe air we have we're mostly water and our gut is the earth just like the planet earth and just like planet earth when we mess up our environment when we mess up our microbiome um, just like earth's microbiome gets holes in it and then we start having issues that's what's happening in the gut so most of the issues that are inflammatory, that are energy related, that are especially in the brain, any, any, anything that has to do with, you know, even eyesight, even stuff, even, you know, a lot of headaches, um, most inflammatory issues begin with leaky gut and are just amplified after that by just a cascade of negative circumstances that develop from that. So, so what this has really brought me back to in, in life is, is like a really foundational place is, is that yes, keto and carnivore are, are the, the food, the dietary food systems that humans have eaten for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. And the reason is, is because our bodies thrive on it. But the reason why people have a hard time eating the food they're supposed to eat is just simply the the destruction of that one cell thick lining in their gi tract and until we get that fixed nothing else they do is going to affect their overall health and they will be in what's called dysbiosis and how, until that happens how does how does fasting impact this situation have you it helps yeah so it, it it helps because it speeds up um entry entropy in your body which is your body getting rid of cells that are damaged so one of the things especially intermittent fasting speeds up the process of getting rid of damaged cells and if you're feeding your gut correctly you can speed up the process of the development of new cells and that and that process can happen in as little as 30 days. But I always tell people to plan on 90 and just, just we first thing, get out all the bad sugar, all processed food, add fiber. And then most, most people will see that change and it happens first in your cognition and then in their energy and then in their overall health. And, and then they'll be ready to, to tackle a, a keto or a carnivore lifestyle with that knowing that they're doing the right thing because their gut's fixed. Now, Brian, I know when you switch from keto to carnivore, you notice instantly a surge of energy by going carnivore, and then it kind of just plateaued out. 
Um, yeah, there's you know, it goes up and down. It's not like a steady thing, but yeah, when I first initially started, it was just like boom, it's like, oh man, like I you know, why'd I wait so long? But but see now I always had a problem with fiber. Like when when I went full carnivore and cut every all the fiber out is when I felt better. Right. Uh, because you, you you know you, you had some dysbiosis in your gut and 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 that does happen um but the type of fiber is really important it's you know it's not just you know if you just go eat 10 10 pounds of kale and and you've got dysbiosis in your gut you're gonna make everybody in your house hate you really really <laughs> fast <laughs> yeah. but but i'm talking about getting like some really high quality psyllium fiber or this stuff that i take um, that's really water soluble that has no sugar in it. And the water soluble part's the great part. Dietary fiber that you eat is not water soluble. And if you don't have the right bacteria in your gut, it's not going to digest. It's going to ferment and you're going to make everybody mad in your house. But just, just getting on a regimen of a, of a low sugar psyllium fiber three or four times a day over a 30 day process and cutting out all other forms of sugar and processed food will fix your gut. Hmm. And then you'll be able to eat kale or broccoli or cabbage or something like that and digest it and not ferment it. So I know we don't give medical advice here on this show, but would you, sugge would you suggest, Steve, <laughs> that if someone's tried a keto carnivore lifestyle before and you know, a number of people have tried it, said, yeah, I, I, I tried it, just didn't work for me. If they truly tried it, if they truly eliminated their sugar and reduced their intake of carbohydrates would you recommend that they just give this a 30 to 90 day shot doing it the way that you're suggesting i do and, and many people watching this are our age and they have been through the colonoscopy experience <laughs> and i'm just saying this so be, because they'll you'll remember this, something if you went through a colonoscopy because you fasted for several days right you ingested some stuff to clean your system out and most people if they're honest will tell you right before their colonoscopy they felt amazing right <laughs> that's what we're looking for <laughs> so you know I, I i tell people if they could do it i mean if your lifestyle is in a situation where you could do it do that do 72 hours do a water psyllium fiber fast and then after that, just reintroduce a, a very low carb diet, but not heavy on fat over the next 30 to 90 days. And they will rebuild their gut and, and be able to do either keto or carnivore, depending on, you know, the, the condition of their gallbladder and liver. That's a whole nother subject. But if you got gallbladder and liver issues, I'd say go like Brian, go straight carnivore, because if you're not digesting fat at, at this point it's better just to skip it and and, and just just go full carnivore because if you, if you load up on this on on the saturated fat and the keto diet you know I, I would say after a year of going carnivore and staying on the water soluble fiber you might find you could tolerate the keto if you want to do that um because that you know, the coconut oil and the M MCTs are really good for your, your brain and your cognitive abilities. Um, but yeah, that would be my, my recommendation as a not doctor. <laughs> However, most medical doctors have one class in nutrition and right. I got way more than that. So, so um, have you but, stayed at a holiday um, Inn express. That's the question we want to know. Yeah. Did you stay yeah. Okay. I did you're... stay at a Holiday Inn Express last night. I'm not a doctor. This is not medical advice. <laughs> but do a 72-hour water fast with psyllium fiber three, four, five times a day. Yes, you're going to spend a lot of time in the bathroom over those 72 hours. Drink lots of water. At, and then go into a low-carb, high-fiber, uh, water-soluble fiber diet for 30 to 90 days. And you'll rebuild your your the lining of your gut you'll rebuild the microbiome in your gut and then you can decide whether you want to go keto or carnival you got any questions brian um no but you you uh, <clears throat> one of the things you're, you're alluding to is is 
is the time span. Like a lot of people give up before the change happens. Yeah. And you have to give it time. You have to give your body a chance to 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 acclimate to the new to the new diet too. Yeah, that's that's why I brought up the whole colonoscopy thing. Is if if you can do seventy two hours on water and psyllium, you're probably going to feel pretty good in that 72 hour span, which, which will give people the, the motivation and, and, and the knowing that, yeah, I think I am doing the right thing here and they'll stick with it. A lot of people in those first 72 hours going keto or carnivore that get the flu symptoms. They're like, I'm out. I can't. Right. Yeah. <laughs> can't go here. So I think that's a better route, you know, for people who have tried and failed is the backup punt back up and punt. Do, do the water and fiber route, do about 30 to 90 days of just, you know, a good low carb, no simple sugar, no processed food diet, and then give it another shot. Yeah. Yeah. I remember my first colonoscopy. That was before I, I found the keto thing. And I remember that feeling like just being clean, cleaned out. Mm -hmm. And I was like, man, they should just sell this stuff over the counter so you can do this like once a month. It's awesome. So, Steve, and, where and, does people where does people get this psyllium uh, fiber? Where did, where did, where can they find it? Walmart. <laughs> okay. So, so just you know, it it's Metamucil, um, and uh, but you know, if if you want more information on the kind that I take with some other stuff in it, you can email me. Jim will put it in in the description if you want. But you, j just a a generic Metamucil that's that's no sugar. You got to what read the label. Yeah, the non-flavored, yeah. Yeah, non-flavored, no sugar added, psyllium fiber, and just load up on it three, four times a day, lots of water, get that clean pre-colonoscopy feel going, which, and, you know, because when, you're, when your microbiome in your gut's addicted to the bad stuff so that it can keep fermenting and, and, and be happy, if you don't do that quote unquote cleanse at first, it's gonna run your life. But you know, so that's why I say that. And it's cheap. It's like, you know, 10 bucks for a month's worth of psyllium fiber, just not flavored, not sugared, and just get after it. So you're suggesting they do that and then so that should they do the they take that along during the does that break their fast if they're using that during the fast? Well, we're not doing the fast to fast, so to speak. We're doing the fast just to cleanse um, and, and do like the colonoscopy thing. Like just, just to, to you know, ba basically roto-rooter your GI tract, give it some, some fuel. The fiber is the fuel. So, so your GI tract is full of these like hairs that are, that are all clogged up and not working. We want to get that washed out, get those doing their job. They feed on fiber. So get get all that resettled, and uh, and it also starts uh, repairing that 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 one cell layer thick lining of, of of your GI starts healing, starts becoming less inflamed. Your IBS symptoms, your bloating, and all that stuff will go away just in a seventy two hour water and psyllium fiber fast. So you know that that kind of gives us a baseline. Then you feed your body a low carb, actual food diet. Stay on the fiber because you still got to feed those cilii down there, and and your body will tell you when you're ready to go keto or carnivore. At that point, you'll you'll know. And you definitely should not be eating processed food during this time, correct? No, that's that's what's that's what's done all the damage, and uh, and sadly the pharmaceutical industry and, and, and our doctors have also not helped us out. But if you're taking prescriptions, keep taking them and, until your doctor tells you you can stop. Uh, but many people will have that happen once they clean out their gut and rebuild it. Um, a lot of people will go back to the doctor and, and start weaning off of certain things because the pharmaceuticals are not helping that issue either. Now, Steve, you said something early on that when you went to the doctor, how you got on this keto journey was right. that you went to the doctor, you're, you had basically diabetic numbers 
or pre-diabetic yeah. numbers, high blood pressure, and your your body responded in three days immediately. Yep. But were you doing this? I mean, that's the question. I mean, were you doing this or just you're you're different than how most people are? Because I it's not no. like so most guys, most people I know have a pretty positive response to keto carnivore if they're male. Females definitely seem to be the ones that get hit um, and are slow to respond to this lifestyle. What? A lot of guys do, and it and and that all gets back to that whole gut brain connection and our endocrine system. So, males and females have different hormones, have different responses hormonally. Um, one of the one of the things, so you'll one of the big big red big red flags of leaky gut is people with anxiety and depression issues. Huge red flag that tends to be a little more on the female side of the spectrum a little more a lot of guys ignore it but a little more uh turns out that cortisol and adrenaline uh pumping through your body because and and brian and jim this is huge all these people that are on anti uh anti-anxiety anti-depression meds are deficient in two gut bacteria <laughs> two specific gut bacteria that are responsible for the production of, get this, 90% of your serotonin. Wow. So you have, so if you, if you are not able to sleep at night, you probably have an issue. Right. Because, because serotonin is turned into melatonin. Right. And if you don't have the serotonin, your body can't make the melatonin. It also can't do anything with dietary melatonin. So if you're one of the people that say, I take melatonin and I still can't sleep, winter, winter, chicken dinner, you got a leaky gut <laughs> and you need to restore your gut bacteria. But I say that because that happens a lot on, on the female side, but even on the guy side that, that you know, it, it, that, that, whole, that entire hormonal response to not having serotonin guys respond differently females respond with a much more significant cortisol production which totally defeats anything you're trying to do as far as losing weight for sure right so your your body's wanting serotonin it's wanting to produce melatonin it can't because you don't have the right gut bacteria so your brain signals your stomach gut we got a problem here and it creates cortisol and adrenaline and it's just a really negative spiral. Uh, so that's the reason why some females don't do well right off the bat or ever with mm -hmm. keto or carnivore because they, they don't have the gut bacteria to produce the serotonin. And so there's this dysbiosis in your gut brain connection. So that's, I mean, th that's literally a rabbit hole we could do a whole podcast on. Um, that's the short explanation of it. Um, I still, even though I had a positive experience as far as my blood sugar and my cortisol, um, I still had some inflammatory issues and got, and even uh, back pain, even, uh, you know, back pain that people have had for years uh, can be directly related to leaky gut. Hmm. Uh, as yeah it's just an autoimmune response uh through through that enteric nervous system you know there's an energy center in our gut it's directly related to that part of our body and if it's out of whack all kind of stuff can be out of whack down there including ed you know including reproductive issues lower back pain uh those can all be related to a deficiency in those same two bacteria that are responsible for uh, producing most of the serotonin we need and and if you're a spiritual person this is huge because serotonin turns into melatonin which turns into dmt which is when you're having really good REM sleep and you have those great me and jim call them night travels <laughs> without dmt you can't do that and i and i'll just tell you that's a hugely important thing in life right now. And especially what we're going through as a country on planet earth, if you can't make serotonin, 
you, you're you're going to be Debbie Downer. It's all you know. It's just it is what it is. Mm -hmm. Well, if people want to reach out to you, I know you're on Facebook, and uh, what's your, can they reach out to you on Facebook and connect with you on your pages? I know you're a social yeah, media. Yeah, I mean everywhere. you can you can find me Steve Conover on Facebook. You can email me Steve dot Steve dot Conover at gmail dot com, or, or Steve Conover Music dot com. Uh, I'm easy to find. If you can't find me, you're not trying. Um, and uh, and I'll and I'll be glad to talk to anybody. Yeah, this, this is something I'm very passionate about, as you, as you are. And uh, I would love to see everybody get out of the uh, out of the negative health cycle that our pharmaceutical and food industries. There he is. There he is. All right, so we got we got booted off. So we'll let you go ahead and finish up your statement, and then we'll uh, we'll sign off with you. Remind me where I was. That's a that's that's a that's a great question because we were just discussing. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so let's just start. So we'll, we'll, go ahead. Go ahead, Steve. Just yeah, go ahead. So I was I was ending with you know if if people want to reach out to me, I'm easy to find. Um, and you know, especially on Facebook, uh, but at steve.conover, steve.conover at gmail or at steveconovermusic.com. But you know, I'm I, I'm passionate about this like both of you are be, because we know what has been done to us. And and I don't know, we don't have to get into motives, but it, it is what it is. We we have been handed a big load of crap by our food industry and by our pharmaceutical industry and by Western medicine. And we, we now have the answers. We, we, we now know how to recover from it and, and how to go forward and, and live really long, healthy lives, uh, not inflamed, being able to sleep, having energy. We, you know, Brian and I can keep rocking <laughs> and uh playing playing music and uh and not looking like our friends in in the rolling stones we look a lot better than they do <laughs> and uh and 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 we can keep doing it and, and do it at a high level and 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 have a great time in life and not suffer all these things that we've been told by our doctors that are a normal process of getting old that's a bunch of crap right so uh well talking about that, that what what you said what would what would when would should you start this regimen, this lifestyle? Do you recommend it for 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 children, their teens, or would should they wait till they've developed? I mean, I that's a great question that I'd like to have answered. Well, yeah, what 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 we're really talking about is more of a therapeutic thing for for adults, probably forty or over, that are that have fallen into this trap. Um, and you know that's kind of what we're talking about. Uh, but but as far as kids go, you know, it it would have been great to not be sucked in by the TV commercials and all the processed food and all the things. Yeah, the Captain Crunch cereal and uh, the <laughs> peanut butter Captain Crunch. I love that. <laughs> I think Steve just froze up there. Yeah. Yeah, Captain Crunch cereal. I remember I I would eat so much of that. My. Uh, my gums underneath my teeth or the t would yeah. be raw. Same right. thing happened to you, Brian. Do you remember that? You just eat yeah. so much of it. It just was like raw. Yeah, it just tear up the roof of your mouth. Yeah, yeah. the roof of your mouth. Yep, exactly. <laughs> You're back. Am I back? You are. Okay, great. So, you know, but 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 we survived. You know, we, we ate Captain Crunch. We drank from a water hose. We did all the stuff. We jumped a bike over a ramp without a helmet. We did all the stuff and we lived. Well, um, you know, the, the thing is, I'm listening to you, and we also ate mud pies. And actually, it sounds did. like mud pies were probably not that bad for us. <laughs> hey, my microbiome, our, uh, our friend Dr. Zach Bush sells a product that's literally dirt from the desert southwest that, that you ingest to help restore the microbiome. So that's, you know, what what I tell people to do is to take control over your own health and your own life, you know, get out of the white coat syndrome that, you know, we, we're not depending on a guy in a white coat that had one class on nutrition. 
um, to tell us how to live a long life. The average doctor still, this harkens back to the Atkins days and stuff, but the average doctor still lives shorter lives than the, you know, the average couch potato lives 78 years. Average doctor lives till his late 60s. Yeah. They were back and in, back we're going to listen back, to them about longevity? Yeah, about the 70s or the 80s, there was that, uh, I forget who it was, but dead doctors don't lie. And, yeah. Uh, so, you know, yeah, if you, if, if, if you need stitches or you need surgery, they're great. But don't go to them with nutrition and longevity. Yeah. They don't have a clue. So what I t this is just part of taking control of your own health. And, uh, you know, so, so get online, you know, it's, if you don't know, it's just cause you haven't looked, we live in, in the most amazing time as far as information. And, uh, you just don't know cause you haven't looked, but get online, search, uh, gut brain connection, search, um, uh, healthy gut bacteria, search gut, you know, all these subjects we're talking about today. Um, and 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 know for yourself that that this is true not just because some redneck in a purple shirt and a guy in a cowboy hat and a rocker telling you to do it um we're 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 just relating our experiences but you know the the the, the point to all this is we we have bought a lie we have depended on guys in white coats and we've suffered because of it but now we have google and each other and our experiences and podcasts and we have the ability to take control over our own health and that's what i'm encouraging people to do well i i'm thankful that you came on our show to share this information i think it's very valuable um i know it's valuable to me and so thanks for taking the time out of your day to, to join us and uh, if anybody has any questions you guys know how to get a hold of them we will have his uh, email in our show notes and as he said, you can reach him out, reach out to him on Facebook or any other social media platform. And uh, thanks for coming on today, Steve. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Brian. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that was great. All right. Have a great day, brother. Thanks, Bo. I will see you. Well, now we're going to bring on Mr. Brian Shanker real quick to give us the uh, Meat Tribe Meat Deals of the Week and uh, hopefully give you the opportunity to go out there and and buy like my brother here a two and a half pound ribeye <laughs> how much how much is ribeye costing did you buy that a while ago or is it recent a recent purchase it was a couple weeks ago it was on sale for i forget 11.99 or 12.99 a pound but the best deal was the the rib roast that i got and then i cut into steaks that was 750 a pound wow that's a really good deal that's great for ribeye yeah yeah that's a great a great deal yeah, I, there's nothing better than a ribeye and a big, thick ribeye of that. I mean, Harris, yeah. Teeter, Harris Teeter sells, and they're like you know, two inches, three inches thick, and uh, and that's that's when I like them. That's when I like to, to smoke them. And uh, oh, by the way, talking about smoking, I smoked the perfect ribs over the weekend. I mean, texture wise, everything, but the seasoning that I, that I tried it was I tried a different seasoning combo, and gosh. It was so salty. It was too bad because they were perfect fall off the bone, the texture, the, the bark on the outside. I mean, everything else was perfect. It was just the, the spices that I used where the salt was overpowering. Yeah. That's what they say. Like, um, you know, I follow that Aaron Franklin guy and, and, uh, yeah, the ribs cause they're, they're, you know, they're not a big fat piece of meat that, that, uh, you can over salt them really easy. Well, let's bring on, there he is there's my bald brother <laughs> where's your background oh yeah <laughs> uh, thanks for the reminder <laughs> uh, oh. hey brian i'm gonna send you that uh, that that notice i put on doors for real estate i'll send that to you later on Okay, cool. I'm gonna share. I'll share it with you with this video, so you have it. Let's see. I can only see Jim. Okay, there you are. 
All right. That was a short one you guys just did. Yeah, about 50 minutes. Oh. Yeah. All right. Well, we fell, we fell off and had to log back on. Yeah. I don't have anything extra to talk about this time. What could we talk about? Because I don't have many deals. <laughs> what to come up with? Do you got any ribeye deals? Uh, yeah. Heck, well, wait, wait. Have you opened up the package yet from Aldi's? That's have you opened? All right. No, not yet. Not yet. It was it was busy last few days with Father's Day and took my kids to see my mom on Monday and then. Uh, Yesterday I had CE class and and was negotiating that offer. So, and uh, I'm a monitor for our CE classes, um, and I had to take the the code of ethics one. So that's a three hour three hour class. So I haven't I haven't done any grilling in several days actually. Hmm. Going through grilling withdrawals. <laughs> well, so. I do got something to talk about before we talk about. So if you just, I'll just, I'll go ahead and introduce you. I think we've already introduced you. I think we already did the segue on the, on the earlier thing. So okay. we'll, just let, we'll just let you jump in and, 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 and share. Okay. All right, guys. How are you today? Good. Good. Good to hear. Good to hear. All right, so not many deals this week have popped up. Um, just I've just got a few here. Um, hopefully, we're going to get get into some more deals next week. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm thinking they were just uh, cutting back on on giving great deals for Father's Day weekend or something. But uh, Food Lion has some 73% lean ground beef at 2.99 a pound. So I keep finding some of that uh, lean ground beef for you for under $3, Jim. Yes. <laughs> uh, Food Lion also has some choice grade bone-in T-bone steaks for $9.99 a pound. And both of those deals run through June 29th. Uh, next up is Paris Teeter. They've got some choice grade boneless whole beef tenderloins. Mm. And that's at $15 and 99 cents a pound. That's a $4 per pound savings. Um, and if people don't, don't realize what that tenderloin is, when you cut that down into steaks, that's actually the filet mignon. So it's a very good, um, higher end cut of meat. Yeah. So, yes. Yes, it tender. is. <laughs> like butter. Then, then Harris Teeter also has, um, has boneless, uh, grass-fed ribeye steaks for nine ninety-nine a pound. So that's it's called Strauss grass-fed ribeye steaks. So I think it's a pre-packaged um, steak that they get sent in into them, but it is grass-fed, nine ninety-nine a pound. And those two deals run through June 29th as well. So you know, I, I went. Brian, I, have... Go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt you, Brian, but I, I went out to Harris mm -hmm. Teeter the other day and I noticed that they're they're selling uh, buffalo pre-packaged oh. buffalo ribeyes. Um, oh, I've never wow. tried. I haven't tried one yet, Brian. Have you tried a, a buffalo ribeye? No, I've seen the bison. Is that the same thing? Same thing. Yeah, I think oh, it's no. so. Yeah, yeah. Bison, bison. Yeah. Have you tried one of those? You just seen them? Yeah, I haven't tried that yet. I've tried. I think I've tried tried the the ground beef before. I'm gonna, hey, how about you, Brian? Have you tried a uh, bison grass fed ribeye? I have. No, I haven't. I haven't had bison ever. I I may have had a had a bag of bison beef jerky once um but i haven't had had any bison oh talk about the, the jerky brian how you like the stuff that you got last week that you you uh brought to the uh show oh i like it it's, that it's, the, the the it's called carnivore crisps yes the carnivore crisp you had the liver the heart and uh i forget what the other yeah. one was yeah the liver is really crunchy but i i opened uh what was it the uh brisket one and uh it's really good. The only drawback to the, those is they have to be refrigerated, so they're not really good for travel. Oh, okay. So that's the only drawback, but they're they, they're definitely really good. Do they have a short expiration date on them, or I mean, do you have to eat them fairly quickly? Let me see. Let's go to the fridge and find out. <laughs> hey, Jim, while he's doing that, where what is this? And where did he get it? He ordered it from their website, I believe. Yeah, I got it straight from the, them. Okay, but they make they make a brisket, a ribeye, a liver, uh, 
heart. There's a bunch of different ones. But and it's made with uh Redmond real salt. Okay. And it's all like grass fed. Let me see. I don't even see oh there's the expiration date. Six two wait, 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 wait. Two thousand nineteen. <laughs> six two twenty two. Oh, okay. You, you got you got some time. You got a year. You're good. And that's all that's left of the brisket one. Wow. <laughs> are you, hey, Brian, are you sure that doesn't have like, uh, you should eat it within three or seven days after opening it? Sometimes those higher premium beef jerkies are like that. Like once you open it, they want you to, to eat it faster. I'm trying to see. It just says for best results, refrigerate after opening. It doesn't really tell you. Okay, that, that's good. Yeah, I had, I bought a, a premium brand one time and, uh, you know, I, I never, I rarely would sit and eat a whole bag of beef jerky in one sitting and, uh, you know, just had a couple of pieces and put it away. And then I had noticed that it said that uh, they recommend you eat it with, it was either three or seven days of opening it and you didn't have to refrigerate it, but they wanted you to eat it between three and seven days. That might be a marketing ploy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wolf this down and buy more. Money. <laughs> but yeah, so that's that's all the deals that I got for you guys today. So go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say that's a good deal for ribeye. Yeah, $9.99 for grass fed. Yeah. yeah. Do, you, do you have Harris Teeter down there, Brian? No. Okay. Unfortunately, I go to Kroger. Okay. Which isn't bad. I might I might have to run out and pick this one up then at this Strauss grass fed ribeye steak and see how that is. Yeah, I may join you for that. I may I may pick that up as well. Okay, cool. One of one of us will have to report next time. I'll have, to, have to go down there and try to get it and grill it before to the next uh, episode. <laughs> awesome. Well, hey, thanks for uh, for popping in and giving us our deals of the week. And if people want to get a hold of you, they just go to YouTube and uh, type in Meat Tribe. Yes. So go to YouTube, try uh, type in meat tribe. It's all one word, um, no space between the two words. And I do a more extensive uh, weekly meat deal update there. Meat tribe, uh, excuse me, I already said that. Don't forget when you get there to like the videos, subscribe to the channel, click on the notification bell. So every time I upload a new video, you'll get notified. And if you come across any deals, please put them in the comments section to share with everybody. I really would appreciate it. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for uh, for joining us and giving our uh, our our tribe the uh, the update. We'll see you next Friday. Have a great week. Sounds good. See you next week. All right. Take care. So, Brian, did you see the uh, the study that was done for Subway's tuna fish subs out in L.A.? I saw, yeah, I've heard a couple things just vaguely, but yeah, something about it. There's no tuna in it or something, but I never heard what exactly it was. Well, they don't know. They said it was, they did it three different, three different locations. They, they bought the subs, took it back to the lab and they ran it through the, the, the testing and it, it was so highly priced, so highly processed food that they could not detect any tuna fish whatsoever. And it was so highly processed, they, they, they never said what kind of fish, if any, did they find. They're leaning more to that it was just genetically modified food uh, oh. that's created in a lab. Um, but, uh, but, but isn't it crazy? Because that tuna fish is like one of the biggest sellers for Subway because people go there thinking tuna fish is good for you. And I mean, I eat tuna fish out of the can, you know, myself, but, you know, I just don't eat it with the bread. But the fact that they did three different locations and the lab showed that there was no tuna fish and it was so highly processed. And so, you know, it's the highly processed foods that, you know, is causing a lot of our issues. You know, we just talked about it with Steve with, you know, your gut issues. That's what's creating that, that yeah. breaking, breaking down the good bacteria that's in your gut. When, you know, you think you're eating a tuna fish sub and for most people they think that's pretty healthy if you go to weight watchers or whatever they're gonna say oh yeah have a tuna fish on lettuce and but the reality of it is you don't even know if it's fish that's the crazy part i mean if you want to go buy go to a, a seafood market and buy fresh tuna so you know you have tuna make tuna fillets tuna steaks that's one thing or i tuna salad 
But to be buying something that you think is tuna and it's not tuna, that's what happens when you roll the dice when you're buying highly processed food, in my opinion. Yeah, luckily I haven't eaten at Subway at Subway in years. <laughs> like the last time I ate there was when I was still eating bread. Right. Which that's another issue with Subway. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, and that's what I would get was the tuna because I wasn't eating meat back then. So that was my only choice. Right. So there you go. So if, I know, wasn't even eating tuna. <laughs> you weren't you were even tuna. You were eating, I mean, who knows? What I was probably was. just eating double bread. <laughs> yeah. You know, talking about highly processed food, I want to share one other thing because this is living life. And, and, then, and then I know we got to wrap the show up. But, you know, Peggy and I have been keto, more, more carnivore than keto, ketovore, carnivore, however you want to look at it. Um, and we noticed the last couple of years, Peggy's very pale skinned. And I'm, I'm my Native American Indian blood. I rarely get burned, but she used to get burned very easily. But going keto carnivore and eliminating the seed oils that we talk about all the time, she no longer was getting sunburned. Like she would just tan, which was she was all happy with. Well, we ran out of uh, our avocado mayo that we used to, to make uh, deviled eggs and started using this the store-bought brand but it did have uh seed oil in the mayo mm -hmm. and so this last week being out the pool she got burned i mean burned badly and i said what in the world happened because she goes i started using we only had the mayo that i had to use for the devil eggs so i just want everybody to realize there is a uh, correlation between what these seed oils do to you and being a, being out in the environment Right. So, so if that's doing to you on the outside of your skin, imagine what it's doing in the inside of your body. Um, so, well, yeah, it affects every cell in your body. Yes, it does. So just, you know, I just wanted to throw that out there to everybody. So if you get burned, if you're truly living a carnivore lifestyle, like I bet, Brian, you don't get sunburned. No, I don't put, I don't use any sunscreen Look. or anything. Right. I, I, and I go walking in the sun or running or whatever. Yeah, it doesn't. But well, I also heard uh, it's good to take a break like every 20 minutes or so just to get out of it and then go back into it so that you're not it's not constant. And that'll right. keep you from burning, too. That's a that's a good, good point as well. So, well, with that being said, Brian, if someone's tuning in for the first time, what uh, what recommendation or what what do you want to share with people? Well, I, I was going to hold these up and say, eat your meat. <laughs> these are meat. But I should have a big steak in my hand. <laughs> yeah, that big old ribeye that you had yesterday, that uh, two and a half pound. Did you put that whole thing down in one city? Uh-oh. Almost. I don't know if you can see this. That's all that's left. Wow. That was a pretty big, was that a two and a half or three pound ribeye? It was a two pound. Wow. So that's, a, that's about maybe three, four ounces. Three or four ounces, yeah, yeah. left. Wow. So go to his page and check out what he had uh, on uh, Tuesday on his Facebook page because you'll see the big ribeye that he uh, chowed down on. So like three incher. <laughs> yeah, it, it was a it was a big one. Well, with that said, uh, we will see you guys next Friday, same time, same place. Stay well, stay safe, and stay out of the hospital. We'll see you next Friday, everybody, and have a good show, Brian. Thanks.